Good morning, folks. You're watching some gorgeous filamentary coronal structures incoming from the eastern limb of our star. We have a lot to cover today, including a groundbreaking study, but let's get started over at spaceweathernews.com. We're looking at the last 24 hours of our star in 193 angstroms, and we're seeing not much in terms of eruptions. In fact, solar flaring remains flatlined. If we are going to get an eruption, it is more likely to be one of the plasma filaments coming in. You can see we're already starting to get some surface action around them. The solar wind is currently very calm at Earth, still expecting the stream from those central coronal holes. And since we're still expecting the stream, we also expect to have had a seismic uptick yesterday. Started with a 6.5 way south in the Atlantic, luckily nobody near there. We did also take two above average in the United States, four pointers in California and in Oregon. Lots of winter weather to talk about in the northern hemisphere, but the strongest storm on the planet is heading at the Philippines right now. Eyes open on the coast as that one is going to be pounding all day long. Interesting story out about Mars. Well, sort of. Not the Mars that we know, but a potential Mars around, close around, an M dwarf star. They compare the habitability scenarios for a sun-like star and that M dwarf. There's also some pretty good information about what causes a planet to be habitable apart from just its distance from the star. And speaking of things around stars, it's looking like there may be another exoplanet at Proxima Centauri. We already knew about Proxima b, but the latest data for a transit is wholly inconsistent, suggesting there could be a second orbiter. Interesting article about Trojan asteroids. The Jovian Trojans around Jupiter are thought to have been captured from the Kuiper belt, but they are so different looking that scientists have begun to model some resurfacing processes during the capture and inward migration. But the problem is, the Neptunian Trojans look just like the Jovian ones, and they're far enough out that the resurfacing mechanism on the inward migration doesn't seem to work. They're left without any explanation whatsoever for the color schemes of these asteroids. Supremely interesting article for you space weather buffs. They are saying that changes in the intrinsic parameters of the magma, temperature, pressure, viscosity, etc., are what determines whether or not you get an effusive or an explosive eruption. And remember, if we're talking about silica-rich magma volcanoes, cosmic rays have a major effect on viscosity. The main story today comes out of Kaiser Permanente. Everybody knows that ionizing radiation can do your body harm, but what about non-ionizing radiation from magnetic fields, such as your cell phone or a computer, or any of the other electrical devices in your home, power lines, or things in nature, like space weather? Turns out, in this specific study, they found it increased significantly the amount of miscarriages. This first-of-its-kind study of non-ionizing magnetic field radiation opens a completely new door for these types of studies. Eyes on this going forward into the future. There is only one place in the world to get space weather health alerts, the Disaster Prediction app, and learn more about them in Weatherman's Guide to the Sun. Folks, we've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 7.25 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.